man, it seemed like everybody I talked to this week, we were we were under attack. We uh Oh look, a hat stand. <laughs> We, uh, everybody I talked to, this was just a terrible week. I mean, there wasn't anybody I talked to that had anything good to say at all. And it started on Sunday afternoon, and it rolled all the way through this morning, probably. Uh, I, I start y'all, y'all, y'all know I like to tell Mason stories every now and again. And just before we get into the the seriousness of the matter, I got two two Mason stories for you. I picked him up Friday from school. And uh, his, his teacher says, hey, I, I heard that you're a preacher over at the Cowboy Church. I said, yes, ma'am, I am. And uh, she said, well, I asked Mason. I said, Mason, is your daddy a preacher? And, and, and his response to her was, no, he's a human. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm not sure if preacher is an alien species or what. <laughs> Apparently, I'm not that. I'm just human. <laughs> And uh, then last night, we're, uh, we're coming home from the barrel race in Edna, and it's about 9.15ish or so. We get to the barn, and man, it was a beautiful big moon outside. Uh, we're walking around, no lights on. We're waiting for one of the horses to eat so we can load up and go. And uh, Mason goes, boy, that moon sure is bright. And I said, it sure is. We, don't, I mean, we can see everything. He just stopped in dead tracks. He goes, thank you, Jesus. <laughs> anyway. So, this week's message was pre-prepared because we didn't have anything last week because we had the McDougals, so I already had something ready. No, that's not the way God works. We, uh, I'm not going to have any slides for you today because God has just flooded me with Scripture this week. And uh, I'll be happy to, to leave this laying up here if y'all happen to miss something along the way, but... Man, does, it, does anybody in here just having the perfect week? Because it, it's been rough. I mean, you know, I'm beginning to think I might need to step down as pastor because y'all y'all hung that title around my neck a couple weeks ago. And, man, it's been bad. I'm telling you, it's been bad. People, people, we we we've had some lengthy conversations with a lot of you, and it ain't been good. Uh, so we know. We know that the Bible tells us that we're going to expect to have these problems, right? We're going to get into some scripture today, and, and you can see that How Dare You was was going to be the, the title of this sermon this morning, and, and it really is, because like like in my prayer, we get we get so caught up in our own lives that, that we just we forget about God until we absolutely think we have to have him. Anybody been there? Been there, done that? We get proud and we think, oh, man, things are going good. We're rocking and rolling. But we don't say thank you, Jesus. We don't thank Him for the moonlight. We don't thank Him for the sunlight. We don't... All these little things in our lives that we just completely take for granted. We, we are probably some of the most selfish people ever. You know, I can imagine maybe in the, in the early days of the caveman and stuff, they were pretty selfish then because, I mean, you found a rock that was good for something. You didn't want nobody else to have your rock. So you hang on, you hang on to your rock. But that's what we do with our problems. We take our problems and we hang on to them. We don't want to give them up. We don't want to ask for help. I'm, I'm terrible about asking for help. I do not want anybody to know that I'm having any problems. I don't want people to come help me when they know I need help. I, I change plans when people want to come help me. I, know I can't do it today. I'll, I'll, I'll call you when I'm ready, and then you know the next day I will do it when they don't know about it. I'm just proud that way. I don't. I don't. I don't expect anybody to come help me, but, I, but when it comes to problems, when it comes to finances, when it comes to death, when it comes to illness, when it comes to, you name it, all these problems we have in our lives are, I mean, how many conversations have you had this week about uh, locker room talk? Anybody had conversations about locker room talk? Donald Trump, anybody? Had that conversation a hundred times this week. How many times have you had that conversation about Benghazi this week? A hundred times I've talked about, I'm tired of talking politics. Okay? It, I mean, nothing, nothing that can be said from here on out is going to sway the way I vote. 
but people want to talk about it instead of praying about it. The country needs to get back to praying, not talking. We have got so many problems and you're just continually piling on, piling on, piling on, piling on, and nobody wants to stop and ask God. Nobody. Nobody wants to stop and say, thank you, Jesus, for giving me the ability to book to vote. Nobody wants to say, thank you, Jesus, for, for making this country free. We're too busy worried about Hillary and Trump. <laughs> since when, since when did the presidential election become more important than Jesus Christ? So, that small little thing right there, let's take all of your problems, all of your suffering, all of your financial weaknesses, all of your cars breaking down, washing machine breaking down, somebody died, somebody got sick, all of your problems, put them in a cup. Then over here in this cup, you put the suffering to Jesus Christ. Which way is that scale going to lean? It's going to lean this way. Jesus Christ suffered more than any of us in this room could ever imagine suffering. So how dare you? How dare you feel sorry for yourself? How dare you think about poor pitiful me? We've all been there. I've done it. I, I'm, I'm bad about that poor pitiful me. Ask my wife when I get sick. Poor pitiful me. I don't. I want to be baby, and she don't do that. Okay? She takes care of me, but she don't baby me. You know? But poor pitiful me, how dare you? How dare I? How dare any of us think that what we have going on right here on earth compares to anything that happened right there on that cross? You, you have, you know what? We talked a couple weeks ago about the washing machine the, and the, the pump head and all these other things that was going wrong right before we went on vacation. Compare though, that string of events to a, thorn, a crown of thorns. Does it compare? No. No, it does not. Think about, think about you losing a job and, and finances becoming to the point to where you're just about to lose everything and you've just completely given up. Does that compare to nine-inch nails through the palm of your hand? No, it does not. No, it does not. Well, Brother Kevin, what about, what about all my family? Just, just, they're just dying. They're getting sick and they're not making it. And, Things are just, everything's just falling down on top of me. My, my, my husband's leaving me. My wife's leaving me. My, my kids are just running the streets being crazy, doing meth, and I don't, I don't know what to do. Does any of that compare to being crucified on a cross and stabbed with a spear until all of your blood is gone and nothing but water pours from your wounds? Nothing compares to what Jesus Christ did for us. Nothing. Nothing. But we're all selfish. Each and every one of us. Okay? We all want to have some ownership. We were terrified to give anything away. Ask all of our people that watch Porters on television. We're afraid to give things away. We want to hang on to everything. Including our own emotions. Our own problems. When the solution... It's so very simple. Give it all to God. Give it all to God. Let's get into some scripture. It's like I said, we have a lot of it. I want, I want to start out, the, the, these first few scriptures that I'm going to read to you are going to point out about suffering. So turn with me to Romans on page 860, chapter 5, verse 3 through 5. 860, Romans chapter 5. Verse 3 through 5. And I don't expect you to keep up because we're going to be moving. So, like I said, I'll put these up here later for y'all to copy down. We can rejoice too when we run into problems and trials. For we know that they help develop endurance. And endurance develops strength of character. And character strengthens our confident hope of salvation. And this hope will not lead to disappoint disappointment. For we know how dearly God loves us. Because He has given us the Holy Spirit to fill our hearts with His love. We can expect, we can expect these things to happen. You can expect to, for the trials, the fires. It's going to happen. We just read it. 
We've read it in here several times. It's going to happen. Quit being surprised. Quit being shocked. Oh my God. I cannot believe that just happened. God told you it was coming. He didn't tell you when, but He's trying to tell you to be prepared. So quit being shocked. Quit being selfish. It's coming. It's going to be here. It's here now. And we're not just talking about uh, our personal lives. We're talking about the entire world. It is here now. The problem is, has arrived. As if the back doors just flew open and trouble walked in. That's where we're at. Everybody is suffering in some way. The devil is after each and every one of us in a major, major way. Whether it be from finances, to a car, to death of the family, to our government, to the political races, to religious, I mean, you, you name it, okay? Somebody in this room is feeling the heat. Everybody in here feeling some heat somehow, some way? I mean, things are bad right now for everybody. And if, you, if you're not one of the ones that just raised your hand, we can rejoice too when we run into problems and trials, for we know they help us develop endurance. It's coming. It's coming. Things are going good for you. I'm sorry to tell you, there's going to be a breakdown. Why? Because you're selfish. Because I'm selfish. We as a human race are selfish. We're just humans, right? I'm not a preacher. We're just humans. But we're selfish humans. We take things and we want to keep them. We want to hold them. We want to bundle them up. Turn with me to page 936, 1 Peter. Ah, I'm glad the air conditioner's working, but it's messing with my page flipping. 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 12 through 19. Dear friends, don't be surprised at the fiery trials that you are going through as if something strange were happening to you. Instead, be very glad for these trials make you partners with Christ in His suffering so that you will have the wonderful joy of seeing His glory when it's revealed to all the world. We are suffering. We are suffering. Christ suffered for us. Do not be surprised at the trials. The fiery trials. Don't act shocked. Don't be afraid. The Word tells you that it's coming. It's coming. Suffering. It's going to happen. Stay on. Stay in 1 Peter. Uh, next page over. Chapter 5, verse 10. In His kindness, God called you to share in His eternal glory by means of Jesus Christ. So after you have suffered a little while, He will restore, support, and strengthen you. And He will place you on a firm foundation. Amen. Amen. After you have suffered for a little while, Brother Kevin, I've been suffering for years. Brother, how, how, how long have you been talking to God about that? Well, there you go. It's time to hit your knees, people. If you can't, if you, if you can't do it on your own, which you cannot, I'm using some serious hillbilly up here this week. Can't, ain't, sorry. We're rednecking it up today. If you cannot do anything on your own, and you cannot, you need God. You need God. We need God. We all need God. People don't understand they need God, but we need God. You drop down on your knees and you ask for that forgiveness. Father, I'm sorry I've been a selfish fan. You're behind. I'm tired of suffering. I need you to take all these problems and these worries and let your will be done in my life. I, I give up. I surrender. Use me the best of your whatever you need me to do. Let me help you, Father, further your kingdom. And I promise you, promise you, your life will change. Maybe not overnight, okay? Sometimes it takes a day or two. Sometimes it takes a month. Sometimes it takes 40-something years. But when you start believing and listening and surrendering, man, it just changes. It just changes. you got to take my word for that. Turn with me to uh, back to page 930. We're going to be in James chapter 1. James chapter 1, verse 2 through 4. Dear brothers and sisters, when troubles of any kind come your way, consider it an opportunity for great joy. 
For you know that when your faith is tested, your endurance has a chance to grow. Wow, the Bible just told us to find great joy whenever we have troubles, whenever we have sorrow, whenever we have suffering, when the car breaks down, when the, when the baby won't go to sleep, when somebody passes away. How am I supposed to find joy in any of that? Because the Bible told you to do so. Simple as that. I, I don't know what to tell you. What you want me to do? I can't help you. All the answers are right here. If you're only coming here on Sunday to hear me say what I'm saying, then you're not getting it. You're not getting it. You've got to jump in this book Monday through, what's it, what, what's, what we say, Monday through Saturdays when the most ministry is done. It ain't on Sunday. It's Monday through Saturday. You've got to get it done. You've got to get in the book and figure it out. I can't help you. I cannot save you. I, I cannot give you any, any more mercy than what Jesus has already given you. I can't do it. It's up to you. Quit being selfish and get in the book. All right, one more in suffering. Let's go back to Romans, page 862. I know I'm bouncing all over you. I'll just stick with me. God was, God was throwing stuff at me this week, so kind of like uh, throwing stuff at the dartboard just wherever it goes, it goes. Uh, 862, chapter 8, verse 18. Yet what we suffer now is nothing compared to the glory He will reveal to us later. Whoo! Hallelujah! If that doesn't give you some hope, hey, let me just let me just break this down. If you're a Christian, if you're a Christian and you believe what you read, and you're you're in the book Monday through Saturday, and you're here on Sunday and Wednesday night, and you're you're worshiping and ministering and praising out in public and you're doing everything that you think Jesus and God have asked you to do. Yet what we suffer now is nothing compared to the glory He will reveal to us later. If, if what we have waiting for us is not the hope you need to snap you out of the funk that you're in right now, if it's not enough to get you over the hump, if it's not enough to change your attitude and restore a little bit of faith to put you back on the right path, then brothers and sisters, it's time that we just put the Bible down, close our eyes, hit our knees, and just talk directly to God. Okay? Just talk directly to Him. Get everything out in the open. He already knows what you're going through. He designed everything that's happening right here, right now. He knew who was going to be here today to hear this. He knew who wasn't coming. He shielded somebody from something because they're not here today. But that's okay. That's part of His plan. It's not... Huh? Okay? But let's, let's just be clear. There is something to be hopeful about. There is something to be joyous about. You can't see it right now. Okay? You can't... Kelly, I know you're upset. I know. I saw you. You almost made me... I had to look back over here during the song because you were just bawling. And I know why you're hurt. I know. The devil's out to get you because they're not letting Jim work here where he's, where he's needed with his family. I understand. But there's somebody where he's at that needs him to be there. Okay? It's not about Jim. It's not about you. It's not about the girls. It's about whoever God sent Jim to be by. Whoever he's standing by at that work site and Jim just says thank you Jesus or says a prayer for lunch and somebody sees it and comes to know it. That's what it's about. It's not about us. It hurts. It sucks. But it's not about us. Okay? Alright. Let's go. Let's jump into faith now. Okay? Let's jump into faith. We've all had our faith tested this week. There have been several conversations that I've had starting Sunday afternoon where faith was an issue. Okay, what is faith? It's what we believe, right? We, we, let's, let's just get into it. Come on. Galatians chapter 2, verse 20 on page 891. 891, turn with me. Galatians uh, chapter 2, verse 20. My old self has been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live, but Christ who lives in me. So I live in this earthly body by trusting in the Son of God who loved me and gave Himself for me. It's not about us. 
It's not about us. If you've taken the time, anybody wonder why they never call it, why they call it baptism instead of pass your ass? I mean, just you go pass your eyes in the water. You know? if, if you've taken the time to be baptized, you've been cleansed of your old self, you're new again, you're, you're new in, uh, in Jesus. It's His life that you're living, that you're trying to live. You're trying to live by His example, am I right? Who, who in here has the type of relationship with their mama or their daddy that when they're in trouble, and they don't know where else to turn. That's who they go to. Anybody ever had that type of relationship? They go to mom and dad. Who is Jesus Christ going to turn to but the Father? What did Peter say? Where else could I go? Okay? Our lives are over when we accept Jesus Christ. But that's one of those rocks we want to hold on to. Right? We want to hang on to that. We don't, we don't want to think about how we're supposed to be living for Christ when, when we're out dancing at, at Buck Wild or, or uh, Murphy's on Six having a drink with our friends or backyard barbecues when we're playing uh, washers or whatever. I mean, it's all about Jesus. It's not about us. Okay? I have, I have, I have a hard time sometimes remembering that I'm not me. You ever, you ever been there? I've been changed. But every once in a while, the old me wants to try to step back into the picture. Okay? Had that problem at work here not too long ago. The old me just right on in there like it wasn't anything, you know? But that's not me. That's not who I am. That's not who God created me to be. Okay? We have to not hold on to these things. Having faith. Turn with me to page 930 back in James. James chapter 1, verse 6. But when you ask Him, talking about God here, be sure that your faith is in God alone. Do not waver, for a person with divided loyalty is as unsettled as a wave of the sea that is blown and tossed by the wind. Let me tell you, let me read that one more time. When you ask Him, be sure that your faith is in God alone. God alone. We cannot, we cannot uh, go to God and ask Him to help us win the lottery. Why? Because the lottery ain't about God. The lottery's about me and you. We can't go to God and ask God to send us, uh, I don't know, uh, a fountain of money. You know, help me, help me walk upon a roll of drug money that somebody lost in a chase. Or, I don't know. I don't know what to tell you. It's not about God. You can't have yourself in your heart when you go to God and ask for the help that you so desire. Your heart has to be one with God when you go to Him and ask for that help. It can only be about Him. He will improve you. He will change you if you ask Him to do so. But only, only if it is His kingdom that's being enriched. Okay? How does, that, how does that help me? How does that help me? That doesn't help me fix the PVC. That doesn't help me get a new hot water heater that just busted. That doesn't help me replace the sheetrock. Let me tell you something. Anything you've ever received, have you ever wondered where it came from? Ever. Or are you that selfish? Are you that selfish that you think everything you got you earned? How dare you? It's not about you. It's not about me. It's about God and Jesus Christ and what He did for us. Blood pouring from wounds until nothing but water came out. Do you have faith in that? Or do you have faith in the sword? The spear that stuck Him in the side. Which one are you leaning on? Are you hanging on to that spirit? Spear to that sword because that's what that's what's tangible that's what I can feel I can see or are you standing on God who gave you everything do you have the faith are you strong enough to give it all up 
to him. Turn with me back to page 811, John 336. John 3.36 Come on. And anyone who believes in God's Son has eternal life. And anyone who believes in God's Son has eternal life. And anyone who believes in God's Son has eternal life. Amen? Amen. Anyone who doesn't obey the Son will never experience eternal life, but remains under God's angry judgment. <laughs> Here we go. We're getting simple again. If I believe in God, I'm saved and I have eternal life. If I believe in Jesus Christ, I'm saved and I have eternal life. If I don't believe that, I will continue to remain in God's angry judgment. How many people feel like they're under God's angry judgment? How many, feel, how many people feel like the devil is out to get you? All of these things can be changed. Everything can be changed if we just believe. Have a little faith. Uh, let's go back to uh, 1 John chapter 5, verse 5 on page 943. I, tried to, I, I, I was going to try to figure out how to put all this on a slide and get it to Troy and Randy to do, but man, it was just... It kept coming and it didn't stop. So, chapter 5, verse 5. And who can win this battle against the world? Only those who believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. <laughs> There's no commentary behind that. It's, it's self-explanatory. Stay in, stay in 1 John and go to uh, verse 13, just down at the bottom of the page. I have written this to you who believe in the name of the Son of God so that you may know that you have eternal life. It doesn't get much simpler, folks. Let's turn to uh, just a few pages back to Hebrews on page 926. Hebrews chapter 11, verse 1. Hebrews chapter 11, verse 1 on page 926. Alright, here we go. Faith is the confidence that we hope for will that what we hope for are right, starting over. <coughs> Faith is the confidence that what we hope for will actually happen. It gives us assurance about the things we cannot see. Through their faith, the people in the days of old earned a good reputation. I threw that in there. I threw in the people of old because, look, apparently they knew what was going on. If you, if you read some Old Testament, there's some things that happen, some trials, some tribulations. Everything that, that our faith system is based on happened to them. And they got a good reputation with God by believing in Jesus Christ. And they were rewarded with eternal life. If it was good for them, it's good for us. It's not, it's not the what's good for the goose is not good for the gander situation. If it was good for the people of old to have high reputations with God for believing in Jesus Christ, then it's good for us as well. People, people want to argue with you that the Old Testament and the New Testament don't cross over and it's a, we don't follow the Old Testament anymore, we follow the New Testament. Let me tell you something. Everything is rooted in the Old Testament. Everything. So if it was good for them then it's good for us. I have no idea where we're at. Don't worry about it. All our bad. All right. We're, we're, we, got, we, got, we got a few more we got to get to. We're, we're on God's promises now, okay? Philippians chapter 4, verse 4 through 9 on page 901. And again, I'll leave this up here for y'all. Uh, chapter 4, verse 4 through 9. Always be full of joy in the Lord. I say it again. Rejoice. Let everyone see that you are considerate in all that you do. Remember the Lord is coming soon.